Hello friends, welcome back to GoTutorials. So far we are seeing about concurrency. So we have seen much more about concurrency like go routines, channels, how to write, as it means write and read from the channels, that is sending to a channel, receiving from the channel, and a unidirectional, how to convert a bidirectional channel to an unidirectional channel. All these things so far we have seen in the concurrency concept. Now we are going to see a new concept called how to close a channel. Right. So, and also we are going to see writing some bulk data into the channel and how to read them using iteration. So, both the things we are going to see now. Before that, closing the channels. See, whenever we are about writing the data, for example, we are using senders. So, the senders are having an ability to close the channels so that they can notify the receivers there will be no data available in the channel and it is being closed. So this is how we can use the close operation in a channel. So senders can notify that the channel got closed and the receiver cannot read any data. And also from the receiver side, they have a value to check whether the channel is closed or available and read the data from the channel until then. So let us see the concept, how to close the channel, how to read data from the channel, all this stuff here. Right. Now I am going to open a command prompt going to maximize the command prompt for better readability going to my go demo folder pico so we are going to see close demo dot go so here as usual i'm going to write a package main with an import for fmt so i'm going to write a go routine with the name display which will return fmt dot print ln display go routine and function main so here I'm gonna print print ln main go routine right so I'm going to call the function go display so this will this is an non-blocking call so the display go routine execution we cannot see so i'm going to create a channel with the name my channel equal to make i'm going to create a channel of type integer so let us create a channel of type integer again next after creating a channel i'm going to pass it to the display method with the same name my channel so i am receiving it here my channel channel of type integer it is as simple as this the code is very simple here now what i am going to do i am going to write a bunch of data into the channel so here what i am going to do i am going to create a for loop i equal to 1 i less than equal to 5 i plus plus so inside the for loop what i am going to do i am going to write something to the channel what i am going to write i am going to write i so what does the statement does is send a set of i values iteratively to the channel my channel this is what you are doing here okay so we are reading the data now sorry we are writing the data to the channel now in order to read the data what we will usually do num colon equal to from where we need to read the data we need to read the data from the channel so my channel so in this statement read a value from my channel so it is as simple as this it is a, an example of the previous code what we did we are going to do the same thing here percentage d slash n the value read is num so it is a very simple code let us see what happens if we compile the code see here display go routine is being printed mean the main go routine the value is being printed as one because even though we are writing the data in a for loop 
but the only the first value read is being sorry the first ball value written is being read from this statement so after reading the values it is being printed here so the value which is being read is only the first value but what we need here is we need to read all the five values stored there so in order to do this what we have to do we need to read iteratively we need to read iteratively see here i am going to do one more read statement here so i am again reading it if you run the code you can see main go routine 2 so we are since we are writing the values in a for loop we have five times we have written into the channel now instead for reading five times we need to for, for, for reading five values we need to add five my channel my channel like that we need to add five times instead of that what i am going to do i am going to introduce a for loop to read the data so i am going to introduce a for loop to read the data how to read it for so my for loop is going to be an empty for loop here. So inside the for loop, I am going to read the data. So what does the statement does? The for loop is infinite. The for loop is infinite because we don't have any conditions or any values defined there. So I am just going to keep on reading the values from the channel. So if the value is being read inside the for loop, then the print statement also will be a part of the for loop. So as and when a value being read from the channel, it needs to be printed. What is the until condition? We don't know the until, until condition. It will keep on read from the channel. So let us see what will happen if we run. See here, deadlock. Because it can read only up to five values. Because the for loop can execute only five times. Because the read statement can execute only five times. Because only five values being sent to the channel. So if it reads for the sixth time, it, it needs to wait for the right operation for the sixth time. That results in a deadlock. So after the sixth, fifth read, it waits for the sixth read, but there are no values being written to the channel. So the go runtime will identify a deadlock so it is raising an error so in order to avoid this we just need to read only five times so only five times what is the thing we need to understand so what we are going to do is we are going to close the channel after five times see here i am going to the for loop so after writing the data there is a function called close using the close function within the bracket i need to provide the channel name so what is happening here I have closed the channel. Now I am going to compile and run the code. It's keep on running. So you can see there is nothing is happening. The loop is indeterminate. So in order to keep the loop determined, in order to identify the channel, whether it is being closed or not, there is a thing a channel offers along with the value. So while reading data from channel, the channel also returns a status along with this. The status will contain whether the channel is alive, that is open or not. If it is being opened, the channel is in the open state, we can read. Otherwise, we can break the for loop. Instead of keeping the for loop executing for new innumerable times, we can have a tab on the status and control the flock accordingly so how to read the data if status equal to equal to false that means that means that means if channel is closed what it needs to do it needs to break from the loop execution so what i am about to say here is it needs to read the data of course, the for, the for loop is indeterminate. It keeps on reading data from the channel. But if once finds the channel is not having any values, that is the, the status is false. That means the channel is being closed. Then automatically it will break out from the code. That means if the OK variable, if the status variable is true, that means the status of the channel is true. That is the status of the channel is not still closed. Then automatically it will read the value and print on the screen. So let us see what happens when we run the code. So it executes five times because we just performed the read up right operation only for five times. Then after that, we are closing the channel. So this for loop executes indeterminate number of times. Inside the for loop, we are having a condition to validate whether 
a particular channel is being closed or not. If it is closed, the for loop needs to be exited. Otherwise, it will keep on executing and printing the values from the channel. So, only 5 times the loop will get executed because there are 5 values being sent to the channel. So, if it, it encounters after the 5th time, the status is being closed. The channel is closed here. Though there is a variable returned while reading a channel which also contains the status of the channel. So, if the status is false, that means the channel is closed, it needs to break. So, the iterative loop for loop will be closed if it encounters the channel closed. So, but for the first two five values being read, the channel remains open. So, the value is being printed here. For the sixth value, the channel remains closed. So, it breaks up from the for loop. So, this is how we need to use the close function in order to determine a set of values, predetermine a set of values for a channel and writing them. Then afterwards, we are need to simply close the channel so that we will avoid deadlock while sending values to the channel. So this is one of the examples. How do we write into a channel and how do we read the values based on the channel status, whether it got closed or not? This is one example. The next example we are going to see on the same type of channel is instead of using the indeterminate for loop we are going to use the same for range loop we have used in our previous examples so the same code we are going to use for range loop so how to use this that is what we are going to see in the next concept so instead of the same for loop set i am going to use the for range loop so how to use the for range loop the same for the for statement we know as usual then in the for range loop what we do we used to have the collections right the same way i am going to declare a particular variable so i am going to name my variable as value so this value will be pulled from a range so what is my range here this is what very much important the value will being returned to a channel so my range here is my channel so whenever a value being available inside a channel it will be read to the variable value so inside this particular for loop inside this particular for loop i can just try to print format dot print ln what is this this is a value right right so the same code what we are having earlier with an indeterminate for loop and a check for a channel whether it is closed or not is being written using the for range loop. So what will happen whenever a value is available within the range of the channel it will be assigned to the value variable and printed inside the for loop. If once the channel is being closed the range will not have any value so the for loop will not get executed. So what will happen if I compile and run the code? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the main go routine is being called for 5 times as in the previous example. But the main difference is there is no control variable inside the for loop. So this is an indeterminate for loop with no control variable. So but this is a for range loop. For range loop iterates until the channel has values so the channel has values until the channel is being closed so this for loop is smart enough to know the values are available from the channel so the values being written to the channel will be read as a range to the variable value and printed iteratively so this is how we used to read the values from the channels until the channel is alive until the channel is not being closed if once it is closed we can exit out so we need to know there is a variable there is a variable being written while we are reading the channel which is responsible to hold the status of the channel the status of the channel can be closed by using the close method so these are all the things very much important while dealing with channels so we may wish to close the channel after writing all the data into it after doing send operations to a channel at any point we may wish we can close the channel so 
in order to notify the receiver the channel is closed or not there is a control variable there is a variable being returned along with the value be of value read from the channel that variable maintains the state of the channel so these are all very important things to be noted while dealing with closing channels and iterating the channels to fetch a list of values from the channel Thanks for watching this video. The next video will have much more details about channels. As we discussed earlier, I am going to cover buffered channels and lot more synchronization. A lot more operations will be following in the next forthcoming videos about concurrency in Go programming language. So if you have any doubts, any comments or even any suggestions for improvement, please put them in the comment section given below. I will definitely reply to your comment as and when I am come across. Please keep on watching. Please click the subscribe button and don't forget to click the bell button. It will get you updated whenever a new video is being posted. Thank you for now.